A new proposal has been submitted to resolve one of Python's more long-standing issues, which is a lack of any real standards around how dependencies are managed and installed. There are a few different ways of doing it at the moment. So you could use a requirements.txt file, you could use a setup.py file, you could use requirements.txt in a setup.py file, you could use uh, you could use poetry, you could use pipenv, you could just do it manually if you really want to. There's so many different ways and so many different routes to do it. And finally, it looks as though there's gonna be a proper standard. The idea revolves around declaring dependency groups within the pyproject.toml file, meaning that all your requirements are just in one single file that you probably already have on you anyway. This clears up a lot of the clutter associated with requirements.txt files. And in my opinion, it's actually a much cleaner solution than the one that Poetry provides. This isn't bound to any Python versions or anything, so if it does come into force, it will just go straight into pip and probably other package managers as well, meaning that it'd be back portable to other versions of Python too. Of course, if you found this video helpful at any point, then consider liking to let me know and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you want to support this channel further, you can do so by becoming a member or a patron. All the information you need is in the description below. With that out of the way, let's get these requirements.txt files out of here. So we're specifically going to be talking about this pep today, so pep 735, called dependency groups in pyproject.toml. And you'll notice straight up that there isn't any Python version attributed to this. And that's because this is a standards pep and not a feature pep, meaning that we might not have to wait until Python 3.13 comes out for this to become a thing. And it'll be up to you know various tools like pip to pick up the standard and start supporting it. So yeah, really we'll get this whenever Pip decides it wants to get this. And then that means it will be, well, not backported, but it will be supported by earlier versions of Python up to a point. I don't know where you know, Pip stops there. Th I imagine they use, um, you know, in, in support versions of Python. I'm doing a lot of air quotes there. I don't know what the official terms are. You can see that this is sort of like a replacement for these requirements to text files, or actually the motivations will probably have this. So there are two major use cases um, for which Python community has no standardized answer. So how should we develop dependencies? How should the dependencies be defined um, for, uh, for projects which don't build distributions? And we have two needs for this. So we have requirements.txt, we have package extras. Uh, there are limitations in each and essentially this pip, pep sorry, aims to provide a standard to get rid of them. So you may have seen these requirements.txt T files around a lot. Those that don't use poetry probably use requirements.txt files. I think pipenv, while it is around, it, it is quite rare. I don't think I've ever seen a pipenv file in the wild before. But you have these, so you have requirements and then you know test requirements, or you might you might have your requirements slash base.txt and requirements slash test.txt. This is how I do it. So I have a requirements directory and then all my requirements in a thing. But basically, if I go down here, there you go. So you'll have this dependency groups uh, section in your pyproject.toml, and then this test will be all of your test dependencies. So in this case, they've installed pytest and coverage. And it works, I suppose the syntax is very similar to current requirements files in that you have, you know, your same, you know, greater than or less than or equal to syntax, just in, well, I don't know if it's called an array in a, I think it's called an array in a toml file. But you know, this will be worked out in a list by the time it gets all passed. There is also, if I scroll a bit further down, somewhere that defines, there you go, so this is probably a better example. So this include equals is very similar to how you would use um, your dash r flag. So in my, I might as well go to my actual example here. So in my example, this is my project called analytics. And I have this one called uh, dev.txt. And it installs everything in the base, everything in the docs, everything in the knocks, and then just knocks on its own. If I go to base, you can see there's only the one dependency in here. And then docs, and then knocks installs a lot of stuff for all its different uh, <laughs> um, things, like bits and pieces. But the dev has all this. So instead of this dash r flag, you would have include equals base, include equals docs, include equals knocks. Um, and then you'd have everything outside. The one thing it doesn't look as though it's able to do is installing itself. So it looks as though you'll still have to do pip install dash e dot uh, if you wanted to, which seems a little bit annoying. I feel like they could have you know, done something with that, but you know, maybe this is still in draft, maybe it will be updated to include that. 
So if you come back over here and then we have all these on one side and then my pyproject.toml on the other, on the other, there we go, my extremely long pyproject.toml. And then if we have this new spec, it would be dependency groups like this. Now I'm going to move this bit over because we don't, whoa, what was all that flickering? That was weird. And then we have our, but I'm not going to do like all of them, just so you know, I'm, I'm only going to do a few of them. So if URL lib three, so this will be our base and that needs to be a string actually. So that'll be our base. And then if we have our docs, because I didn't have that many, uh, docs equals, and then we essentially just copy paste all this, tab it over and then what happens if I do that? Nothing good. All right, cool. That's awesome. Just do it like that. Or we can't do it like that. This is weird. Well done, Tommel. So you have a system like this where you pass multiple dependencies throughout that. And then if I had my dev and I wanted to install both, I would do something like include equals uh, base and then include equals docs. And I'd also have Nox, and then I don't remember what version I was, like 2023.2.5 20, or whatever it might be. Uh, but you do something like this. So your dev uh, group would include your base group. So include all these. It would include your docs group. So it would include all these. And then you'd have your other dependencies off to the side. So if I you know, did this on multiple lines, that might make it a bit easier to understand what's going on. Like, uh, like that. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to the specification. There's not much else to it. There's a few things about weird dynamic stuff, but I've I've never had to deal with that before. So that's fine. When this gets adopted, or if this gets adopted, I suppose, would depend on PIP itself. So as I said at the start of this, this is a standards PEP, not a feature PEP. So you know when it arrives will largely depend on or just when the standard gets accepted and then when pip decides to implement that standard into their newer versions. And then the Python versions that are supported at that time will depend on the version of pip this ends up getting included in. I imagine that'll probably include Python 3.8 as its minimum version, unless it takes a really long time, then maybe Python 3.9. But for those just using poetry because you hate using requirements.txt files, this could really be a game changer. I think this is a lot cleaner than Poetry System. I I don't really like Poetry that much. I did used to use it, but its its implementation is really messy and quite unclean. I found it quite slow. I also found it really unreliable, especially when it came to newer Python versions. So I just totally abandoned it in the end. But something like this is so much better than having all these requirements files. I've never really liked having all this around. So having this, would be an absolute godsend if they accepted it. I can't see why they wouldn't, unless you know maybe there was a, a a huge objection to the specification, which I don't think there will be, because I quite like the specification as it is. Um, maybe apart from an editable install mode, uh, but yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on this uh, on this pep because it is very new. It was created. If I go back, it was created in. November 2023. So this is a very new one. So yeah, I'll keep you posted, I suppose. But yeah, that's everything I wanted to talk about with this. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Let me know if you'd like it or whether you just think it's a waste of time. If you have any ideas on what I could do in future videos, then let me know in the comments below as well. Uh, I read every single one, so your feedback is greatly appreciated. I want to thank all my amazing members and patrons on screen now, especially Mazard Rushman III for being so generous. And I'll see you in the next video where we talk about one of the most unloved parts of Python that's actually incredibly useful. I've talked a little bit about it on the channel before, but I haven't gone into a huge amount of detail, and that is Dex. So I will see you for that.